Hi everyone, this is Nick with Whole Latte Love and today I'll be showing you how to do some basic maintenance for your ECM Mechanica 5 Slim. So going over things like just maintaining that group, doing some back flushing, and ways that you can more thoroughly clean your steam wand. So let's get into it. So let's start off just with the most basic bit of advice that I can give you, which is to regularly empty out your drip tray. So the drip tray is gonna catch water, obviously, from your group, especially if you ever rinse your portafilter under here and you know any purges that you do with your steam on, but it also mainly gets filled by the discharge from the E61. So you're gonna wanna empty this out before it gets too heavy and full of water. And basically all you need to do is simply slide that off. You can see this is where your machine's serial number is. You've got a little frame that's cut out in here. I'll uh, grab this back flush disc because we're gonna need that in just a moment, but that's a great little spot that you can store extra baskets or that back flush. And so basically, I'll just turn this around for you. You can see there's tracks that just cover these rails here and you slide it on and off as needed. And one other thing too, is our grate here. It has a hole cut in it that's supposed to line up underneath the E61, so just make sure that this is facing the machine when you put that back in. So I'm gonna go right on ahead though and dump this out and I'll bring it right back. All right, now I've got my water out of here and I'll just use a rag here so I can get some of the excess off. But one thing that we can kind of see now that the uh, bulk of the water is out is that there is a little bit of coffee staining just along on the edges on the inside here. And that's gonna be very common because ultimately coffee kind of likes to stain just about everything. So if you really want to do something about that, something that works wonders is some Ernex Cafe sprays. So maybe just take this off one night after you've uh, dumped it out. Give it a good spray, let that soak for a bit, and then you can wipe it down after about a minute or so. And then put that back on the machine. That's if you really wanna keep things looking nice. But otherwise, you can go right on ahead and slide that back on the machine. And I'm gonna be showing you how to do some back flushing, so we're definitely gonna be filling this tray back up again. Now that our drip tray is emptied, I can fill it back up again, but no worries on the uh, overflowing there with some back flushing. So back flushing is the process of simply running water into a back flush disc and then having it purged back out through our solenoid. So that's actually gonna help clean out the group and the solenoid valve. And there's two processes that I'm going to show you. These are both uh, ones that I've discussed at length with our service supervisor. And the first was one of his own recommendations, which is simply to water back flush. So the idea is that instead of using a detergent every day, you can at least run some hot water into your back flush disc and then purge that back out. So, and if you do this actually on a daily basis, you can use that opportunity to check the bottom of your baskets and the inside of your portafilter to see if you've got any kind of buildup from coffee. And that's another place where that Ernex Cafe Sprays really comes in handy. You can use that to break down oils that have built up. And so what we'll do is put our back flush disc in and lock that into the group. And you'll wanna do this uh, at the end of the day when you're done brewing, but maybe two to three lifts of our lever here. And we'll go for about 15 seconds a lift and then flush, wait, and then perform that for you know one to two more times. So we'll go ahead and purge, and you will get some pressure out. That's why it's good that we emptied out the tray before doing this. Simply do that again. And if you keep up with this on a daily basis, you can really help to make sure you're getting less and less coffee and grounds built up in here so that when you actually are back flushing with some cleaner, that there's less actually going on in here that you need to purge out. But that's the water back flush. So now that I've shown you how to water back flush, let's just take a look at back flushing with some detergent. Now, you really don't need a lot, and I'm gonna be using Ernex Kafiza. This is a fairly ubiquitous back flush detergent. It's used all over the world. It says World Barista Championship, keyword being world there. But uh, I wanna pry this off because you really don't need a lot of detergent. You actually only need about three grams. So I'm gonna show you quite what that looks like. Probably not the most stable surface using a towel here, but. So 
So this is actually a little bit more than we need. This is about 3.8 grams. You can always tip a little bit back in there, but there's 566 grams total in this tube. So uh, that's a lot of cleaning. So this is about three and a half. And uh, we'll just go with that. But really, there are some measured scoops that you can buy too from Ernex. It's a scoops brush if you want something to scrub out the group and then also to uh, measure out your back flush detergent. But we'll lock that back into the portafilter and then we're going to do 10 cycles. So we'll do actual cycles first with the detergent to start breaking that up. 15 second pulls at a time, five second intervals in between. Once those first five flushes are done, we'll empty out the detergent if there's any left inside the basket, and then just do five more flushes with clean water to make sure that we've gotten all of that detergent cleaner out. Now, one thing that our service manager has said is that if you really, really wanna do your due diligence, you can continue running water against the detergent until all of it has been dissolved and run through the group. At minimum, we would say, do at least five 15 second flushes with that cleaner in there. So. We're gonna start like this. And when I flip the lever back down, it's not uncommon that you'll see some of that brown coffee oil discharge there. So you'll get a nice white foam from the cleaner, but as it's breaking down that coffee, like you'll see it. And that's, you know, I think always good for people to kind of see for the first time because you realize, hey, there is stuff in here that you can't necessarily see, but that you should be cleaning. And so I think back flushing can be a wake up call for people if they've uh, maybe waited a little too long to do it. So we'll purge that down and you could definitely see some coffee dripping out of there. So we'll give the relief duct a few seconds, like I said, about five or so, and then go on ahead and lift the lever and start that again. So you do this five times, followed by five more purges with just clean water. Based on our service manager's recommendation, if you're brewing two to three shots a day, that includes your milk drinks, you should be water back flushing and regular back flushing at least once a week. One thing that I do want to mention is that you may also notice that for the uh, back flushing, when you're back flushing, you might hear that uh, lever squeaking a little bit. That's just a result of you actually cleaning it and uh, it will eventually go back to normal. So if you hear it squeak just while you're back flushing, that's also completely common. And if we can unlock our portafilter now, you can see there's still some detergent cleaner that's in there but we've really stopped getting any coffee discharge from the group with our back flushing. So we'll go right on ahead and just rinse that out. And then we can lock the portafilter in and we'll do five flushes of clean water to purge any remaining detergent out of the group and out of the valve. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that four more times and then I'll be done with back flushing. And now that I've back flushed, the last thing that I wanna do is just remove my portafilter and take a look at the group and just see, is there any coffee ground, uh, you know, coffee grounds left in there? And I can just see maybe a little bit right here along the edge of the screen. And that's what that brush is for. Coffee can definitely get stuck. And you know, just a little bit of elbow grease, a little bit of like a nice nylon bristle brush like this. You can loosen that up and get that cleaned off. And 
They give you a brush because you should be using that brush. <laughs> and that's how you'd clean your group. Now that we're all done cleaning our group, it's time to give some attention to the steam wand. So one of the most important things that you can do just to keep that wand clean is to wipe it down right after you're done steaming and to run a purge of steam through it to get any of the milk out of there. But let's say, for example, that you want to go the extra mile. Well, there's some stuff that you can do, especially with some cleaning solutions here, to help get the inside of that tube cleaned out even better. So one of the things that you can do is actually just take some hot water from the hot water tap. Not too much, because we're gonna still need some steam pressure. And then while you're back flushing, so this is gonna be a once a week sort of deal here, what we're gonna wanna do is get that wand in this water and froth it. And then we'll close the valve while our tip is still submerged to try and draw some of that hot water up into the wand itself. And we'll let that sit for about a minute. And that's just going to help act on any of the milk solids that might still be in here. And then once a minute has passed, we'll purge that out and repeat that two more times. Now, let's say that you think your wand really needs some TLC. That's where a dedicated milk cleaning solution would come in handy. So I've got some Ernex Rinza, you know, it's the M61 tablets here. What we use these for is we actually can dissolve them in hot water to make a milk cleaning solution. So I pulled some hot water from the hot water wand and what I can actually do, drop this right in and then use the steam wand to agitate to make a cleaning solution. And just like we did with the water, when I'm done frothing, simply pull some of that solution up into this tube to clean it. So let's do that. We'll get a little foamy, so you do want to just keep an eye on the volume in there. And that's just to agitate that tablet. And then I'll stop and wait about a minute. And then I can dispense the solution from the wand and we'll repeat that process two more times. And that's just drawing up you know, a little bit of cleaner in there to really break down any stubborn milk solids that might still be inside the wand. So when you're done, you simply purge and then froth again. Once you've finished drawing in your cleaning solution for the final time, you can go ahead and purge. And then what I'm going to recommend is that you dump out the cleaner and replace it with hot water. And then do one last frothing session so that you can just rinse out any remaining cleaner that might still be in that wand. And that's how you would take care of your uh, steam wand on the Mechanica 5 Slim. And that's it for my overview of the ECM Mechanica 5 Slim. This is a great compact machine, perfect for people who love those milk drinks. I'm Nick, and thank you so much for watching.